Uh, hi, Margaret. <laughs> Thank you so much for participating hi. with us. It's, it's always great to have an opportunity to meet more people and, you know, introduce the work and get outside, you know, new eyes on the work. So I'm always happy. And actually in COVID, I feel like there's in a, in a funny way, there's been a little more of that possibility. I'm based in New York City, but I've spent, uh, pre-COVID, I've spent a lot of time as an adult living and working um, overseas. In quite a lot of places in Southeast Asia and in India and in Japan, um, in Morocco. And textiles, actual literal textiles, pretty important work. So I've been doing them up and collaging them onto canvases and uh, screening with them. Some of the patterns are solid colors, but a lot of them are, are printed already. And mm -hmm. I'll put my own pattern on top and it's kind of creating this dialogue. And um, there's a, I work a lot with repetition. So there's a lot of influences also of uh, spirituality, Buddhism and uh, practices that reference that kind of practice of uh, sort of a, a re repetition, like a kind of a physical mantra. And when I was home, because I, I had to you know, work at home, so I, I had all of this paper that I had bought in India. Uh, I was in the Kochi Biennale a couple of years ago and I bought this, this is amazing tie dyed Indian paper mm -hmm. you can see the colors. Wow. And yeah. I just started working on, I, this is a series called um, a catalog of cure. Mm -hmm. And it was really to do, so I brought home all of these silk screens and started combining these different patterns. And to me, that was, the combination was kind of a metaphor because the patterns from all over the world, like as a metaphor for the sort of global interconnectivity, which, you know, we all discovered was a real thing once right. the pandemic hit the world. So I titled the pieces of after like um, medicinal uh, remedies or uh, rainforest plants. You can see like the the painterliness of the, the way the paint goes on top of the screen. I have also a lot of digital archives of, of images and patterns that I can draw on for new mm -hmm. work. And uh, my work is a lot about recycling patterns and um, motifs. So mm -hmm. I don't feel that that's been exhausted. Right. But one thing that in a way, a funny way of being here, it forced me to, um, start I did some larger paintings that were in a group show at Kines Bar and so it it kind of I kind of it kind of focused me a little bit on sometimes in some ways on um working here I'd say the thing that really was the more the impact on my practice is you know just the whole which I you know I, I'm totally not alone just the whole larger issue of the pandemic and you know we had you know, some kind of early on some, you know, a lot of financial issues. So that was, you know, that was, it wasn't like I was merrily in my studio every day working. Yeah. I mean, I think that making art is never easy and, right. and that, and that, um, that blank canvas or that taking that first step is it's always a first step for everyone, whether you're a freshman in art school or you're, you know, 75 years old and you're, you're approaching a new work. Right. And I th think that um, that's always something I have to remember when I'm feeling, Oh, it's not going very well. Or, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, if it was, e it's not easy. It's not like going to the beach for right. me anyway. Margaret, thank you so much for talking with us, you know, by sharing your insight and, you know, to know what you're doing and how you're going about uh, navigating through the pandemic. It will help other artists, you know, as well. So thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you.